Country Hanukkah from 6 ABC. Action News, Delaware Valley's leading news program with Deuces Rogers, meteorologist Cecily Tynan, and Jim Gardner. Wednesday night, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky pays a visit to President Biden at the White House, and two water main breaks on the same street flood many on this morning. But the big story on Action News tonight is an AccuWeather alert. All is quiet now, but heavy rain arrives tomorrow, and Friday temperatures will literally crash to brutally cold levels. Let's get right to meteorologist Cecily Tynan and the latest information from AccuWeather. Cecily? And Jim, this is the calm before the two-day storm. The main low I'm tracking is still across northern plains, bringing some heavy snow there. And this is fueled by true Arctic air. That cold air is already starting to move into the Great Lakes area, Green Bay, 9 degrees, Minneapolis, 0. So first we get the rain and we get the wind. Then we get the Arctic front. So we do have an accurate alert for tomorrow and for Friday. We're talking about the potential for some real heavy rain. About 1 to 2 inches could be enough to cause some localized flooding. Strong winds. Winds tomorrow night gusting about 50 to 60 miles per hour. Could get a few rumbles of thunder. Then on Friday, that's when we get the Arctic front. That could come with some snow squalls and then a flash freeze where anything that's wet will be freezing immediately and that could cause a lot of travel problems. Now for tomorrow, big travel day tomorrow and the high travel trouble will be across the Midwest, kind of arcing across the Great Lakes. Now on Friday, the system really expands and this is when the high travel impacts will be all the way from the Midwest through the Northeast down across the Tennessee Valley. This is when that colder air arriving by Friday evening, that wind chill at five o'clock all the way down to the single digits. I'll break it down region by region with Future Tracker coming up in the full accurate the forecast. Jim. Thank you, Cecily. Action News New Jersey correspondent Trish Hartman is live in Pensacola tonight. Trish, the big problem could be ferocious winds. What kind of preparations are going on there for that? Well, Jim, a lot of people running those errands before the storm hits. This pre-holiday storm is certainly going to throw a wrench into getting around over the next couple of days. And throughout our area, agencies and companies are preparing for the rain, the wind, and the freezing cold. When the storm moves in, one of the most concerning elements will be the wind gusts, possibly 50 to 60 miles per hour and likely strong enough to bring down tree branches and power lines. It's morphed and changed a little bit over the last several days, but... You, we knew that we were going to need some additional help. PICO's chief operating officer says the company has brought in 100 extra technicians and they're standing by to help with any power outages that may come just before the holiday. We pulled that trigger Monday and they're coming in from Virginia and Connecticut and ready to battle the storm when it comes in on Friday. After that rain moves through, temperatures are expected to plummet. Hardware stores like True Value and Marlton are stocked with ice melt and shovels. And companies like RPM Heating and Air Conditioning are bracing themselves for a lot of calls from people with no heat. This will be our really first good cold snap, and usually that's, we get hit pretty good. Service manager Raymond Moore says extra crews are on the schedule in anticipation of heat pumps freezing up in the frigid cold. They just run constantly, constantly, constantly. People don't check their air filters, and because they're running so much, they begin, they, they break down. Now we heard from PennDOT and NJDOT today. They are preparing, but because of the rain coming in first, they're holding out on brining the roads because it would just get washed away on both sides of the river. They say they will be standing by with salt trucks to treat the roads as soon as they are able. Reporting live in Pensacola, New Jersey, Trish Hartman, Channel 6, Action News, and Jim, on your last broadcast, thank you for everything. It's truly been an honor. Thank you for you, Trish. Thank you. We have breaking news from West Philadelphia where police arrested the shooting suspect. The suspect wanted for shooting a Philadelphia Parking Authority enforcement officer. 39-year-old Termaine Salisbury was arrested near 55th and Girard today. Salisbury is also suspected in a gas station shooting in the Bronx three days before 
shooting the PPA officer last month. That is the allegation. Three additional buses full of asylum seekers arrived in Philadelphia from Texas this morning. The city provided warm clothing, food, drinks, and other necessities for the 125 migrants on board. 77 of them were taken to the city's welcoming facility. So far, Governor Greg Abbott of Texas has sent 12 buses to Philadelphia that since November. A Maniung Street turned into a not-so-small stream with a not-so-small current today. A couple of water main breaks inundated the 100 block of Conroe Street this morning. Live at the scene tonight, Action News reporter John Paul. John, what is the current status of the neighborhood, and did some folks lose water service today? Yeah, so Conroe, they, they don't have water in these houses right here. The other areas, they just have low water pressure. Now, the state of the area, there's still a lot of debris on the ground, and you'll notice the sheen of water. As they're still trying to repair this, they're worried that this could freeze as the temperatures are dropping. For about an hour this morning, Maniunk looked more like Venice. Water filled the streets thanks to two broken mains about a block from each other on Mansion and Canoro Streets. I live right here. I, I walked outside and there was water rushing down like a giant flood and I was trying to get to work on the train, but I missed it. The rushing water created a headache for drivers as roads iced over and police had to close areas off so they could be salted. <laughs> which you can see was an uphill battle. I'm parked right here, actually. I'm on the street. So depending on <laughs> how it clears up, I may or may not be uh, calling an Uber to work. Heavy equipment chipped away at the streets so crews could repair the problem while neighbors waited for their water to come back on, busy with cleanup. We have about an inch and a half, two inches of water in the basement. No, those repairs continue tonight. The big question is, what caused these two breaks? Well, I did talk to authorities earlier. They said the cold temperatures could have caused it. Also, there's some construction just over here near where it broke. They're going to look into that. But I was talking to some employees just a little bit ago, and they told me somebody actually hit a fire hydrant up the street that could have sent a surge down through the pipes, causing this water main break. They're still looking into it. For now, we are live in Maniac. John Paul, Channel 6, Action News. Jim, I'll send it back to you. You one last time. It's been a real pleasure working with you. And you, John. Thank you. One person was killed in a crash in Minkwadale this morning. Delaware State Police say a car was headed the wrong way on Route 13 South when it struck a dump truck. This happened at 7:30 in the area of Fernwood Avenue. The driver of the wrong way vehicle was killed. Police have not released the identity of the victim. A historic visit to the White House today. President Biden hosted the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky. It was Zelensky's first trip beyond the borders of Ukraine since the Russian invasion 300 days ago. Zelensky said he came here to thank the American people for their much needed support, those his words. The two discuss future military aid from the U.S. Zelensky will address a joint session of Congress at 7.30 tonight. And World News Tonight with David Muir will have complete coverage of the Zelensky visit. That's next at 6.30, right after Action News. Delaware Governor John Carney joined members of the American Jewish Committee today for a shine a light on anti-Semitism week. Carney signed a proclamation taking a stand against hate crimes targeting the Jewish community. The nationwide event coincides with Hanukkah tonight, the fourth night of the eight night and day Jewish celebration. Coming up on Action News tonight, Cecily Tynan with the AccuWeather forecast. Stormy weather ahead, plus the holiday forecast. And the Eagles gear up for Cowboys Week. Deuces Rogers with how it's looking for quarterback Jalen Hurts. Those stories, much more when Action News continues tonight. So I always follow the direction from my producer, Jamie Shore, and she has <laughs> instructed me to turn this newscast now over to the two of you. All right, and we're honored. Yes, you have no more control. You. We're taking over. Uh, Jim, this is a bittersweet day as the final minutes tick away on your very last 6 p.m. broadcast. And we are thrilled to be celebrating you with you. And today is pretty exciting. Your daily commute to work was anything York, but routine this afternoon. I mean, take a look at this. We would like to thank the Radnor Police Department who provided an escort for the one and only on his special day, a fitting tribute for this journey you've taken for 
46 years. Police escort to work. And we Press are not on. the only ones celebrating Jim Gardner. You have been a staple in homes across the Delaware and Lehigh Valleys every single night. This is a live scene right now across from our six ABC studios. Tonight, the viewers are showing up for you. Signs that say, Thank you, Jim. oh, you can hear them. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Right on cue. Fantastic. Your final newscast is a sport for some. Diehard Jim Gardner fans have turned out. They've been tailgating Jim all afternoon. And in true Jim Gardner fashion, Jim went out there this afternoon. So rub some elbows and shake some hands and, and say thank dogs. you. That is awesome. <laughs> and we would like to know how you, the viewers, are celebrating Jim and watching this final newscast. Share with us at 6abc.com slash Jim Gardner. And Jim, I want to tell you, you have about... 17 minutes to change your mind. No hard feelings mm. if, if you just want to stay here a little longer. I've got a very hoarse voice, so it makes my voice lower. And, and that's happening because the seamless transition to Brian Tad. <laughs> you sound just like him. Will now be even more seamless. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you, guys. <laughs> what did you Brian. say? I thought, you had, I thought she had you. I was trying. <laughs> you got me. Fine. We'll be back with what Cecily and Deuces really do best. The AccuWeather Forecast Plus Eagles prepare for their Christmas Eve clash with the Cowboys when we continue in just a moment. Eagles fans have one question. What is the story with Jalen Hurts? We still do not have the answer, but Jalen Hurts did not participate in Eagles practice today. There's a good chance we see the backup Saturday against Dallas. In Gardner, we trust the other Gardner. Gardner Minshew was out there running and dancing with the first team today. The Eagles back of QB has barely played this season, but he has made 22 starts in his NFL career. The Eagles coaching staff will be ready to roll with either QB. Gardner's played a lot of football. Um, he's a smart, competitive guy that understands the game. So um, if Gardner's out there, we got all the confidence in the world in him uh, that he's going to go out and execute. And those those conversations that uh, myself and him have throughout the week uh, leading up to the game, if, if he's the guy, then uh, we'll be ready to go. Franco Harris has died. The longtime Steeler running back was best known for the immaculate reception. Harris was a part of four Super Bowl teams. He is in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Before attending Penn State, Harris went to Rancocas Valley Regional High School in Burlington County. Franco Harris was 72 years old. Don't look now, but the Sixers are starting to put it all together, even though they are still not all together. Tonight, the Sixers will host the Pistons. Still no Tyrese Maxey, but Furkan Korkmaz might be back. He's listed as questionable. Korkmaz has missed the last two games with an illness. Meanwhile, the Sixers are riding a season-high five-game win streak, but they are far Dunker. from satisfied. Cleaning up a lot of the little things. I feel like, you know, a lot of times when you go on these runs and you're winning a lot of games, you could uh, tend to have a lot of slippage in, like, some of the little stuff. So uh, we were really detailed today at shoot around, just cleaning up those little things and uh, being solid, most of all. You know what I mean? Being solid and continuing to build on the stuff we were working on. My pleasure, dude. <laughs> you know how much I love you. All right. Um, we've got some fierce weather on the near horizon. Yes, it's coming through in waves. First, we have the rain, then we have the cold air. So we do have a flood watch posted for our area. Let me show you the graphic right now. We can go ahead and take weather one, please. <laughs> the chroma key. Uh, there we go. Well, we'll show you this. Uh, Storm Tracker 6 is showing the system that I'm tracking. Low pressure that's moving across the northern plains. That's one of the lows. That comes with the cold air. But there's also another low off the coast. And and that's what will bring the heavy rain. So a flood watch has been posted for really the harder viewing area tomorrow afternoon into Friday morning. We're looking at one to two inches of rain and the ground is frozen right now. So there's going to be a lot of runoff. So I do think we'll have some localized flooding. That's from that low and then that secondary low. That's what comes in with a cold air. So timing it out. Future track is showing by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. The rain is here. Could begin as some brief frozen precipitation in the northern Lehigh Valley and the Poconos, but even here, this is a rain event. By 5 o'clock, we have some heavy rain, and then late tomorrow night, this is when we have the best chance of some thunderstorms right along the coast, and that could come with winds gusting up to about 60 miles per hour. We get a lull briefly early Friday morning, but then the Arctic front will be pushing in, and this is when we get some snow showers, perhaps even some snow squalls, and temperatures plummet. They go from temperatures in the 50s to well below freezing. So please be careful. A flash freeze is possible. Primarily sidewalks, driveways, overpasses, and secondary roads. Hopefully they can get those main highways treated. But please be careful if you're doing any traveling on Friday. So the exclusive AccuWeather 7-Day
Thursday forecast tomorrow. That heavy rain is here by mid morning. The winds picking up through the day, so we have an accurate alert tomorrow and Friday. That high 48 degrees. Now on Friday, the high 52 in the morning. Then temperatures dropping down into the teens by the evening. So a flash flood, a freeze is possible. Saturday we dry things out for Christmas Eve, but it is cold. 21 the high. Wind chills in the single digits. Still very cold for Christmas Day. 25 with wind chills in the teens, and then temperatures moderate next week. Monday 30, Tuesday 37, and Wednesday finally more seasonable. Partly sunny with a high of 40 degrees. I will have an update on Action News tonight at 11. And Jim, it's been a pleasure. You've made all of us so much better here at Action News. We're going to miss you. Come visit, okay? Will do. Thank you, Cecily. Right. Acme Markets is making sure families in Philadelphia have a bountiful holiday dinner. Today, volunteers deliver 200 turkey dinners, fresh produce, and desserts to Sharon Baptist Church in the Winfield Heights section of the city. Acme also provided a $50 gift card to purchase additional items to complete their holiday meal. And we'll be right back. story on Action News. It was here that Pope John Paul II delivered Mass. The hostages have come home to American soil. This past weekend marked the end of an era in Philadelphia. The final footnote to a storybook career. And so the question is, what is next for the Soviet Union? In Wiesbaden, West Germany. In the Holy Land. I'm Jim Gardner, Channel 6 Action News at the White House. For the city and for every individual fan who bleeds green. We're not going to argue about this again. I depend on the Action News team. Two best guys in the world to be here for everything. That's correct. That was really nice, Jim. Oh, I really please. appreciate that. The least I could do. <laughs> Mine was a professional life well lived. So, as some of you might know, this was my last shot anchoring the 6 o'clock news at Channel 6 and trying to get it right. The first time was May 11th, 1977. I was six days short of my 29th birthday. Foremost on my mind was trying to avoid humiliating myself and embarrassing this television station. But there were enough talented and truly supportive people holding me up so that we avoided a disastrous start. I was searching for my voice and probably didn't really find it until the Pope came to town in 1979 and we did two full days of unscripted television. Everybody seemed to think we did a good job. I thought I did too. It was only after that experience that I finally felt worthy to represent the efforts of the members of the Action News team. And in my mind, that's when we, and I mean you and I, really started this journey together, a journey that ends tonight. In fact, we travel through much of our lives together. I've been reading comments from so many of you about how you once watched us with your parents, even your grandparents, and now that you're a parent or even a grandparent, we are still part of your day, a part of your world. That sense of being engaged in a generational relationship has been profoundly satisfying to me and to my colleagues. I do appreciate all the kindnesses and even expressions of sadness that some viewers have relayed to me over the past year and especially over the last number of weeks. But what I need you to know is how much I'm going to miss you. We have long had an unstated agreement, you and I. I like to say that we formed a covenant years ago. We give you respect and our commitment to reporting in a no-nonsense way those things that are important to you and making sure that what we tell you is accurate and fair. But we also promise to share in your joys and your sadnesses, your triumphs and your losses because they are ours too. We are all members of the same community and we have the same very high stakes in its well-being. And in return for all of this, you gave us just one thing your trust. Well, maintaining that trust became the most important motivator for me, coming to work every day and doing the absolute best job that we could, that I could. 
And that's why I feel so good about the future of the two newscasts where I hung out for all these years. Rick Williams has quickly made Action News at 11 his own broadcast with the help of astoundingly good producers and so many other Action News folks. And if there is another anchor who feels more committed to furthering our unique relationship with you, I'd like to meet him or her. Brian Taff is a consummate journalist who will easily be the smartest person ever named to be anchor of Action News at 6. And like Rick has done at 11, Brian will join the magnificent Cecily Tynan and, oh yeah, deuces, to form the best <laughs> 6 o'clock anchor team in America. I can't let this broadcast end without saying that I have adored working with Jamie Shore, who has produced Action News at 6 since 2011. Jamie, we have run a marathon together, and predictably, you carried me over the finish line. My wife Amy and son Jesse are in the back of the studio right now. Amy, you have been and continue to be my beacon. And Jesse, you are a shining star. And I can feel the light of my other children, even from a distance. Permit me a final word, if you would. The American free press has been under attack, not by forces from other countries, but from elements embedded in our own society and even our own government. It worries me deeply. And it both feeds into and exploits people's lack of understanding of what the founders intended, the kind of democracy that the U.S. and only a handful of other nations aspire to. Thomas Jefferson said to John Jay in 1786, our liberty cannot be guarded but by the freedom of the press, nor that be limited without danger of losing it. Jefferson would concur. No, we are not the enemy of the people. Serving the people, you the people of the tri-state area, with responsible and unbiased journalism, this is our mission now and in the future. And if we falter, you damn well better let us know, for your benefit and for ours. Brian Taft will be sitting in this chair tomorrow night at 6, and I won't be terribly surprised if he is still sitting here decades from now. Funny how that seems to happen here at Action News. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is next on Channel 6, and then please join Rick Williams, Cecily Tynan, and Deuces Rogers for Action News at 11 here on Channel 6. For the entire Action News team, I'm Jim Gardner. Good night. Jefferson Health. Don't delay your care. Make your health a priority. Call 1-800-JEFF-NOW or visit jeffersonhealth.org slash to do. Closed captioning is sponsored by Closets by Design. Save 40% and for a limited time, an additional 15%.